question too. Yeah, I do. The um, what's the solution? I mean, that's I understand it's a yep. presentation. It's the kind of the overall, you know, global right. governance through the means of you know Common Core, Agenda Twenty One, all these different issues. But you know, living here in Alaska, um, this is my reality. My kids going to school. Uh, math, English, is, a lot of this stuff obviously is, is influenced with social studies and so forth. They're, they're bringing this into even math. The, the indoctrination into uh, views of sexuality that don't comport to the biblical right. view are brought into the math classes, other th other of these. Well, my question yes. basically is, is, what's the solution? Yeah, because I, you know, I've listened to a lot of this, and this is a kind of a regurgitation, and I appreciate it. Um, but when I'm listening to this stuff from people, and I'm really ignorant, I'm going to have to educate myself to a lot more of this. But really, what's the solution? I, I don't know, obviously through some legislation and so forth, but where is this at in the school system? Is it a system now that is completely in place? Um, I don't believe it's, I can't speak to that, whether it's completely in place or it's certainly coming in. How, how far along are we on that? In the timeline, um, so we didn't go into detail, uh, in 2012, it's basically been adopted. It, it has, now it's statewide standard, statewide assessments are going to be done in April. I know for sure in, in the Anchorage School District, and these are, are these new AAI. Uh, but the problem is, is I'm going to try to answer your question. It says, first we have to admit we're doing Common Core. We're being told over and over again, I have it on video over and over again, we're being told, I have it in emails, we're not doing Common Core, okay? So one, we have to admit we're doing Common Core. That's, first of all, where we need to start. Second, we need to say, do we want Common Core in the state? There's a lot of people that are getting paid a lot of money, and there's a lot of people employed across the state right now. And, and millions of dollars are flooding in this state. And I, I, it, it's unimaginable. We're going real light tonight, but we have made this so complicated it would make you want to leave, okay? Well, you know, I'm, I'm retired from the state myself. I worked for 30 years, so I understand how the system and all the process mm -hmm. works. But that's just it. Once you have all this in, I guess my question is, you know, mm -hmm. if it's complete, you know, how are you going to root it out? Because my kid's going to start, he's four years old. Right. He's going to go to school. We're talking about all this stuff. And at that point, Teachers and so forth are employees. I'm employed by me. I pay my taxes. You know, and this is an appropriate manner in which to, you know, engage folks. But people are kind of trained to be bullied away from that kind of approach. And so, again, you know, how is this going to, this all sounds good, but how is this going to be changed, regardless of what we're going to call it? It's not appropriate from a perspective, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay. It's a good, first thing we need, need to do is, 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 um, is first of all admit we're doing Common Core in this state. I think it's critical that we know that. Second, as a legislator, I feel like the ball, if my son was a football player, the ball's been stripped from my hand. As a person who worked hard to get elected, and I thought I had control over education, when I have learned that Commissioner Hanley is working directly with, um, with uh, the U.S. Department of Education, the, the executive branch is, it has a tremendous amount of power with this No Child Left Behind waiver. So one, I as a legislator have to figure out, that's why we're going to meet with Governor Walker on Friday, okay? We're trying to prove to him, one, that we're doing Common Core, two, that it's a federal program, and three, a way out. So we're working, we're working on that. We tried to get the Constitution, Representative Keller, which you all know, we tried to get just, we must teach the Constitution in Alaska. We tried to get that bill through. He was the prime sponsor. I was right, right after him. Okay, you know what we were told? We can't tell those teachers what to teach. Okay, and, and so that's why it was blocked. It was blocked in a, in a pretty powerful committee. And I'm not going to reveal exactly who and where and why, but that's what we were told. That's why I have decided. I've worked for two years trying to work in the legislature. There's no will that I can find, or very little will, to really root this out. That's why we decided to come to the people. Okay. It's, it's very deeply entrenched down there in, in Juneau. And we finally decided that it's the people. The, pe the power belongs to the people. So we need solutions from you. I can tell you what I would do. Do we want English language art standards? Then let's look at Dr. Spotsky's. Do we want math standards? Then let's look at Dr. James Milgram. Do we want the Constitution? Do we want classic literary literature instead of this informative deck? Yes, I would say we want classic education. I can tell you what my plan would be. But I tell you, but we need to hear from you. We need to hear from the teachers. And, and we, first of all, we need to get the power back. The executive branch has the power right now. Now, let me ask you, it's, um, in dealing with the teachers, it's 
culture that you know you don't know what you're talking about. We're the teacher. <laughs> okay. Now, if I go, they're gonna. That's what they're gonna say. There's almost a. I don't know. I'll use it. Nazi-like culture. <laughs> Education is establishing culture. Yeah, and so. Do we have a lot of teachers afraid to speak up right now? Because I've met, uh, there's a teacher right up here. A lot here of teachers are afraid to speak up. Well, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But that's what I'm saying. The culture, it's not individual. Adheres to the Constitution, culture. knows the Constitution. Yes, ma'am, in the back. I came today to show up next Tuesday. Yes. Every elected official took an oath to defend the Constitution. Two, two in the we're middle. Both, we're both elected officials. Okay. And we got handed down from our state commissioner. If you, what level are you? I, I'm the, uh, uh, he's the president of the school board. Okay. The vice president okay. of Madison School. We got handed this down. Here is the education standards. You will adopt and teach okay. the education So, so the second, state second, is saying we won't fund you if you don't do it. And okay. second, your teachers will be evaluated 20% this year, 30, 40, up to 50%. Based on these. Based on the assessment yes. score. Okay, so you're feeling that your hands so are tied just like she is. Well, our, hands, our hands are tied. And, and who, who, which like branch of the state? Hey, come, hey, come to the local, local meeting. Come mm -hmm. to the local meeting and hear where we are. But we are in the same position. So, but that mandate that they said, we're not going to fund you if you don't do this, do they have the authority to mandate that? What no, we see right here, no, it's unenforceable, no, they right? They have the power of the purse. They, they have the they do. They have the power of the purse. So where is our state legislature on this? And, and, and Why did the governor re put Hanley have back have in? You, have you called them and asked them this? And I would encourage you to do that. I think what we need is the people. I, I don't think anybody in here agrees with what's going on, right? In the back. So I appreciate you from Anchorage, but Thank the, uh, the Matsu has a pretty good school district up in Battle Lake compared to ours in Anchorage. But I disagree. I wholeheartedly disagree with these two school board members. They were elected by you folks here. To, and you should hold them accountable. Don't take they're, they're feeling like they don't have power. Oh, we're feeling like we don't have power. That's crap. Because if you're going to do that, then we don't need a school board. Right. Sure. The state will run. That's, that's you the say state. no. You hold your money, and you get the other school boards to join. Yeah, I, that's, that's you, ma'am. Well, that's right. Between the school board decides and the state. Yes, ma'am. Well, okay, exactly. front. I mean, you guys going in a survey to complain to the governor about Hanley and, and all. This I would say that that might help. It seems that this is coming from the state executive, who is agreeing unlawfully with the federal executive. So we're having executive tyranny in the federal level and executive tyranny at the state level, and the Tenth Amendment protects us against that. Take them to court. So take them to court. Absolutely, I'll do it for the IRS. That's it can be done. Don't it can be done. Can. Yes, I'm, I can tell you, you can take the IRS to court and win. If My dad can tell you that. <laughs> if you know, yes, and you're going to call me afterwards. Oh, I here's, know so here's, about here's, it. here's here's one thing that you know, and and I and Susan can attest to this. I don't go to the school board meetings all the time, but when I do, and I've gone up there and I've testified, I'm the only one that is vote that has gone up to the school board and said not no but hell no on something. Or I or like the last time I was there when they were talking about the, the NEA and the contracts, I was the the, the 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 there was there was five teachers in front of me and me, and that was it. The rest of the rest of the people at that school board meeting are exe are, are are reporters and administrative staff. Where the hell is everybody else? What time was the meeting? I was there and I testified. Myself. Not that day I was there. Guys, let's, let's bring this back. Let me let me just tell you. Um, th this is why I'm right here. This is awesome. This is exactly what we're hoping for. We want you. We are empowering you. Knowledge is power. That's why we're here. It belongs to you. 
okay, you elected people to do this for you, and if they're not hold their feet to the fire, you'd be in their face every day. That's what my constituents did. That's why I'm here. They would not leave me alone. If you want your government to leave you alone, do not. Do not leave them alone. I don't care if you call them every single day, but more than talk, more than call. If you write a letter, it's 10 times more powerful. Write a letter and demand that you get their opinions in, in the power of the written word because they can't change it back and forth so easily as they can. Oh, I never said that, okay? Get it in writing. I can't find a single legislator, hardly will, that will put it in writing that I don't, they don't want this common core, okay? Therefore, I'm weak. I'm, I, everyone's telling me no one's following you. I, you know, I keep thinking, no, the people elected me and they keep bringing this, this to me, but then I get to Juno and um, I'm told we're not doing common core and that no one's following me, okay? And I, I really didn't want to get all this get, get all this out there, okay? But it's scary. I have, I have worked so hard through committee after co committee and I just want to protect parent parental rights. That's all I want to do. I want to protect state sovereignty. That's all, and I'm sure you guys agree with me. That's what we want to do. I want to protect these elected officials that are being told, Commissioner Hanley is, is got the powers. He, he's not elected, okay? He has got the keys. He's the one that these letters are going back and forth to. It's never meant to be. We're losing our republic because this is happening, okay? It's a re republic is a representative government. I don't feel like I can represent my people because the power, either through the courts or the executive branch, is being stripped from me, okay? You've got to get it in writing how your elected officials feel. Can I say something else? The, uh, it's like I told uh, Congressman Don Young, Don Young's office, and what, just what you said, and I've been talking to them for like the last year on various topics, and this seems to be kind of a typical thing. The office <coughs> told me there, the young uh, aides, were that they felt like we lost our representative government. That's what I'm hearing everywhere. Like, you know, you, uh, you're in a position, you're handed money, you got to delegate and control these things, but you still have to answer to someone else. I get that. And I can understand the gentleman's concern, you know, behind me here. But, you know, you get frustrated and call bullshit on this stuff because you get to a point, well, who's in control of it? And then we are. it comes back, well, I guess we're supposed to be in control of it, right? But the you're a lawyer, right? Yes. Okay, well, ultimately in all of this, laws control everything. We're supposed to be a nation of laws, so therefore, how are we going to change We're a nation of laws and not of men, yes. And under under our system of government, the Founding Fathers drafted that the legislative branch is supposed to be the most powerful. They're not co-equal branches. The legislative is the most powerful. They write the laws. The, exec the executive comes next, and then the judicial. We saw with that cartoon from 1937 that we had judicial tyranny, and for several decades, that's what took Christianity out of our schools, was judicial tyranny. It wasn't the Founding Fathers' intent, that's obvious. Now we've moved from judicial tyranny to executive tyranny. You know, what, what about the immigration, what, what went on a couple months ago? Did Congress decide something? No. We had the executive branch usurping, and that's happening here on the state level, it appears. children home on those days we say something huge we don't need you we Amen. need to do it we are our we the people it, yes you, we can't know, we yes. can't put it just yeah. on you we can't put it just on them we have to say no to you're them. absolutely right you and are absolutely three right days a year we don't have to take those tests they can't yes. come and get us that an applause. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> you how passionate I was. Um, I flew down on to, to the, I, I wasn't in a, a big fan of his be before the election, but I decided that I'm going to get behind whoever the people chose. That is my duty. So I am trying to find every olive branch I can to work with this new governor, okay? Um, and it, I thought that the one really sparkling thing, because Parnell had told me we weren't doing it and we were doing it, you know, that, that whole whole thing, I said, okay, this governor, I can work with him. I flew down there and I said, I got in his face, I went in the, in the mansion. I, I, I made sure I got in the mansion. It's exactly where Parnell and I had our big falling out. But but I, got, I was in the mansion and I said, I'm going to look at you in the eye and I'm going to tell you I have problems with Commissioner Hanley. I have problems with him, okay? It's hard for me to reveal all this to you guys, but this is how important it was to me. And I, I told him that we're doing Common Core, and I, I had real issues. He looked at me in the eye, and he says, before any appointment, 
I will talk to you. Any key appointment in education. Okay, for three weeks I tried to get an appointment. I didn't. I did the symposium on December 9th at Tiffin Anchorage. I asked everybody, please call Governor Purnell. I mean, excuse me, Governor Walker right now. We need a different um, commissioner, okay? And nobody hardly calls, not very many people. And this is what you're saying, one people might. We, I did a call of urgency knowing that he was appointing commissioners. If you don't listen to the call of urgency, it's falling on deaf ears, then you're losing power. He ended up the night before he appointed, reappointed uh, Commissioner Hanley. I called uh, his uh, director of political, said, said um, you know, what is your biggest issue? I said, the, com the commissioner of education. The next day, didn't t say anything, the next day it was in the newspaper. You don't think I was on a hot phone call the next day, okay? And your board, we have Heather, uh, Sarah Heath here. So you in your backyard have Sarah Heath. Is she still here? She is now the deputy director of boards and commissions. You need to meet her. She now can vet everybody that is getting on every board and committee and it's in your backyard. Her name is Sarah Heath, okay? Now we've got uh, his attention, um, Walker, Governor Walker, we now have his attention. I, I called him and we had a nice uh, chat, firm chat, but, uh, but then we have gotten an appointment with him for an hour, okay? So we do care, but it can't just be us. He needs to hear from you, okay? So with that, um, thank you very much uh, for all of you getting involved in caring. And the U.S. Supreme Court does have a solution for this problem. And the reason that the Tenth Amendment exists, according to the Supreme Court, the reason that the federal government may not mandate that the states carry out the federal program is for just what we are experiencing here. Something's going wrong in Alaska that was caused by somebody, we don't even know who is the person, is he in this room? No. So who is in the room? We have school board members who are elected by people in this room or in this room. And we have a state representative elected by people in this room. And our, and our mayor, and our so we have local elected local officials members. here who might be getting nervous because the people are getting mad, <laughs> but the problem wasn't caused by anybody here necessarily. This, I mean, this common core situation, that nobody here invented it, right? So the Supreme Court solution would be that the local people who elected these local officials are gonna complain to you. And you took an oath to defend the Constitution and uphold the Constitution. What's going on is unconstitutional. So you elected officials are gonna say, to the people who are telling you what to do. You can't tell me to do that. It's unconstitutional. The Supreme Court says it's unenforceable. And then they're gonna go up to the ones who told them to do it and so forth. So we do need the local elected officials to stand up and say, it is illegal for me to do that. To, to get the money and implement that in this local school, I'm violating the law, I'm violating my oath. I'm not going to do that. I took an oath to defend that. And as an executive, I took an oath to faithfully execute the laws. And they're gonna say, oh, and maybe you're not gonna get your funding, then what's gonna happen? Something's going to happen, and it's gonna push it upstream until it gets changed. Because the people can't fly to Washington, D.C. The people elected these local people, so they walk out of their house and talk to the local people, and the local people took an oath before God to do something. And so they're gonna do something. <laughs> say you have a, a duty to do so because you took an oath before God to uphold the Constitution and follow the this freaking school district. Don't give me that look. Can, can, Prince, can Prince versus you, can the school board tell the state, no, we're not doing this because Prince versus U.S.? It appears would, that way to would me. That, would that work? I would say so. And if not, then I want to be talking to you because there's got to be something else done here. Right. Well, we have the Supreme Court's clear that the people can sue under the Tenth Amendment. The people have absolute standing because the Tenth Amendment protects the people against tyranny. And we have in the Missouri case where the people did sue on the money being spent. And we have uh, also, you know, Governor Jindal as the, the elected official sued. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Get it in writing, yes. Most logically, would most likely be by the school districts. Yes, sir. I think the, you know, the whole thing about 
on the common core. I think the real reason for that is they're trying to get around the law and make funding issues. Correct. Yeah, the, the whole system, and that's what Governor Jindal uh, alleges in his lawsuit, is that it was an intricate scheme to go around these Tenth Amendment, because the, the Supreme Court law is crystal clear, I would say, here. You, you sir. Stephanie, you are in your new deal. And the Government Bureau of Research from 1937 to 1980. Yep. We are all ensnared by what is called by the government the federal source of private income. The administrative. The administrative yep. state. And you don't and, and that, your We're seeing that here, yes. Yeah, this, is, this is all. Uh, Representative Reinbold went over all of these unelected people who make this administrative code. And we're seeing here the problems because the people who were elected aren't the ones who are. And, and, the ones who wrote this law, these laws are other laws that say you can't fund the Common Core. The elected official wrote a law that got passed that said you're not allowed to fund the Common Core. So the unelected officials in the executive branch wrote an administrative code that says, oh, and they signed documents, these waivers and so forth with the federal government saying we're doing Common Core. So, the way so you're, you're right on point. And that exactly 1937 was the stitch in time that saved nine, as that the previous slide, yes, sir. So a, a little bit of a recap, perhaps to calm the mood, <laughs> traditional view, and once again we'll decide and we have some school board members. So what kind of curriculum do we want? John Adams says citizens should be educated in the principles of freedom. I think many in this room have been educated in those principles. Noah Webster, the father of traditional American education. Maybe we want to go and you know, use his blueback spellers back when Christianity was still in the classrooms. Anybody in here want to go back to Noah Webster, or would we like to do something more progressive? <laughs> John Dewey? Wasn't the first textbook used in the Illuminati? Was Noah Webster's, yes. Well, I thought it was the Bible. That's what I thought was the Bible. Also, the, well, the Bible was <laughs> correct. And the, yep. Yeah. yeah. In Adam's fall, we send all, all of these. Education is favorable to liberty. Freedom can only exist in the society of knowledge. Now what happens without learning, with a dumbed down society? Liberty is neither equal nor universal. So it's quite a contrast. Arne Duncan, we heard, we're not gonna get our funding if we don't dumb down the kids with this curriculum. Because education, we have to educate our way to a better economy. Data may not tell us the whole truth, but it certainly doesn't lie. So I don't think it can take the witness stand, because you have to tell the whole truth there. But we're only going to use the data to close and reopen, reorganize thousands of schools around the country. We're, we're fighting for social justice here, according to Arne Duncan. Anybody in this room in favor of social justice? No. Or do you want constitutional justice? Yes. What is social justice? Wealth redistribution, right? Wealth redistribution. You have too much, he doesn't have enough, we're going to take it from him so that everybody has the same. That's Arne Duncan, the U.S. Secretary of Education. Did anybody vote for him to be the U.S. Secretary of no. Education? Could you have? No. No, because he's appointed by Obama, right? What can we do? Again, why I'm here, because these are my three sons. And I expect they'll probably have children, my grandchildren. I don't want my grandchildren to be born into a communist country or a Marxist country or a socialist country or any other kind of country other than the republic guaranteed to us by the Constitution. And if we wish to be free, what do we do? Just go home and turn on the TV? Watch football. Watch. <laughs> we must fight. And what are we using here to fight, by the way? What's on the screen? Words, right? What's more powerful? Money. Words. No, words. <laughs> the word is more powerful. The word of God and the, and the word written. In the back, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, I, I'm convinced out of this evening that there are two actions that other states have taken and they are That would mean that parents would have to educate their children. Yes. Oh wait, that's what Congress found and what <laughs> our founding fathers said was. Now, 
it will be remembered that the legislature has an affirmative duty to provide a public school system and that the early republic included a combination of home schooling and public education but the education was in liberty not in progressivism may i just suggest that a really immediate thing that you can do that can make an impact in just a grab the legislative history and just the 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 the
people that I have the biggest issues with right now is gun levies and gathers because they not only were they on the education committee and went through the task force, they were also part of the free conference committee. Laura Weinbold got college and career ready stripped out of the language on the task force. Guess what? Gun levy and gathers that have nothing in the free conference committee, and they're the ones that decided that we should get college and career ready and make conference ready. So that's who's representing us right now as minority. Oh. So that's why I ask you guys to please get it in writing. It empowers me, okay? It empowers me to get it in writing. I can't hold your legislator accountable. I don't elect them. You need to. Uh, so that's uh, Ryan Bull. Uh, could I ask you, now that you're going through the budget, is it possible to defund the federal funding? In other words, how much money would that take out of the budget and would that be a way to disconnect what's going on? That is certainly a solution that I would like to bring up, but I can't find a single other legislator that's willing or the Department of Education that wants that, especially now that oil is so down so low. They are all just lurking around that money, I understand. We also have to, we have to get our message right that every one federal dollar, we're spending about four state dollars, roughly. So, I mean, but- How much is it? We, we, how much do we get um, from the federal yeah. government? I, I unfortunately don't have the statistics right now, but I think it's it's um, we spend about 1.5 billion, and I'm gonna have to uh, I can absolutely verify, but we spend about 1.5 billion total on education, uh, K through 12, and I think just a fraction, less than five percent or so, comes comes from from the federal government, so somewhere ar around let's let's just say five to ten percent. So it's it's a smaller part of, of it. So we. The state and the local taxes. I have a chart that shows all this. I'm happy to come back and talk about cost, um, but to me, education is the most important thing. There is nothing. We're on a war right now for the minds of our youth. That's why, out of the thousands of people that come to me and ask me to take things on, I have chosen to focus on this because education, to me, is absolutely critical. And I am just so deeply grateful to people like Nathan McPherson, who comes and stands by my side. And and I do have to give a little bit about for the legislators that aren't here tonight. Um, they, we are supposed to be in Juneau. I mean, we're, we're all headed to Juneau right now, okay? So I have to give several of them grace that, that um, I'm choosing to do this because I'm so deeply, deeply passionate. And people like Shelley Hughes, um, Wes Keller, and Kathy Tilton are all, all beginning to stand by, by my side on, on this. But we get pulled in so many different directions, it's hard to stay focused. But I keep saying if we focus on too many things, we're gonna lose too many battles, and we can't keep our eyes off these beautiful children and the rights of our parents, so. The gentleman back here wanted to know what we can do. There is one other thing that, that we can do. And it's gonna be a quick plug. I'm the National Director for Citizens Initiative. We are, we are pushing for a counterman amendment which would get rid of the Department of, of Education in a heartbeat. All it takes, once this is be, it becomes ratified, is 30 states to repeal any federal law, rule, regulation, executive order, treaty, excessive spending, judicial decision, any of it. That means Department of Education, you want to get rid of it, it could happen. Get with me, get, go to countermands.us, look it up, read about it, because it's, it's, I got a bill going to this legislature this year. We got 15 states to uh, sponsor it. We're going for it. Okay. And I believe Shelly Hughes is looking at that. Um, Representative Shelly Hughes is looking at that. We did start a Freedom Caucus. Uh, so there was four of us who've started a Freedom Caucus. Of course, there's blowback right now because we started this, but we felt like it was that important. So Shelly Hughes, Wes Keller, my, myself, and Kathy Tilton have started a new Freedom Caucus. And so you will be hearing about these freedom issues from us. We do have United for Liberty behind us now. We got a certificate that anything we need to help stop this movement. What we need from you is resolutions. Every community council, every program, every church, Everybody, we need resolutions. That empowers me. When people are telling me down in Juneau, nobody's following you, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's an intimidation game that's going on, okay? So I need you guys, I need you, I need you, I cannot do this. The power belongs to you, yeah. Also, um, there's free forum Fridays every, uh, on the radio, 6 to 6 Free, free forum, forum Friday, Rick Friedel, Kate, yeah, e and I. 6.50 a.m. radio, 7.50 a.m. 6.50, 522, 6.50, Kate, e and I.
my sister's Dr. Farr, and I believe she calls in almost every Friday on a free forum fri Friday to talk about Obamacare. Call every one of you are now empowered. Every one of you need to take this baton from us and go. We've empowered you. You are now in charge. You are the experts. Yes. And that, that's six in the morning to nine o'clock. Six a.m. Um, to nine. Rick Friday. Friday. Yes, Dave Steering, you can get on even though he shuts me down. And I think he's very pro Common Core, by the way. Um, I've, I've heard some pretty disparaging comments about me and, and anybody who, anyway, I don't, I don't want to repeat them because it's, it's hearsay because I didn't hear him directly, but it's pretty am amazing comments, okay? Um, we're trying to get Alaska Policy Forum involved. American for Prosperity is looking at this. Many, many organizations across the state. Uh, we're, we're, we're inviting school board members. We want even our opponents in this room, okay? Uh, more questions, Lori. No, no, no. This is about a parent issue, about supporting no. their teachers because their teachers are going to be impacted so hugely. hugely. And this is, again, this is not about a political party. This is about our children and how they're going to be tested. And where we're going to end up. So even if there are liberals and progressives in here, we have to fight this battle together. If you go out and you, you search the internet, you're going to find there are so many superintendents and principals stepping down that are liberal. And they'll tell you that because of what it's doing to the children. So please, Absolutely, as I'll work with anybody across any lines to protect our children, you know, even to protect our teachers, you know, and, and their freedoms, and uh, and of, of course our, our parents. Um, hey guys, it's, it's uh, five minutes till nine. Uh, we, we set the goal of getting here at nine. So what we're going to do is we're going to let Nathan uh, wrap up real quick, and we're going to take a two-minute break, and then we're going to have a, uh, a quick parent-teacher panel of the three people that have been personally impacted by Common Core and get their testimony. That'll go about 10 minutes or so. And then we're gonna have uh, Laura wrap it up and what, what can we do as constituents to, uh, to fight this battle. So we're gonna go a little bit late. If you have to leave at nine, I understand. We've been here for four hours, but uh, we'll let Nathan wrap it up. We'll take a two minute break. I'd like to recognize any military veterans or current active duty. just got back from overseas service and made it here tonight. Thank you for that, for fighting overseas for our republic. And I, I think it would be a disservice to all of you military if we dropped the ball here at home, wouldn't it? Yeah. We want to prove ourselves worthy the name Americans, don't we? So any further questions before the break? Yes, you ma'am. Yes. He just did for the transportation. Yes. <laughs> yes, you might want to write a call. And yeah, I mean, it, it goes beyond one guy. Yeah, but, but that's because he you fucked Make your voice heard. He, he fucked you, the people, decide. I think we've heard a consensus in this room. Make your voice heard. You're not weak. So we'll take a break then and come back for the parent teacher panel. Thank you. Can I get a big uh, round of applause for uh, making a person? What a fantastic pleasure to have you in the valley. Two minute break. Uh, after the uh, after two minutes, if I can.